Assalamu alaikum viewers. Welcome to virtual university and welcome to your English class. If you notice the title of today's lesson, it is ways of organizing texts. It is the same as we as the one we had last time. This time we are going to talk about two other ways of organizing texts and these are cyclic, cyclic process and cause and effect. In the last lesson, you learned how to write a time-based or a chronological sequence and a linear process, a process that consists of a series of stages and which has a clear beginning and an end. In today's lesson, you will still be looking at processes, but this time it will be cyclic, it will be a cyclic process and not a linear one. A natural process is more likely to be cyclic than linear. As the word cyclic itself tells you, a cyclic process, in a cyclic process there is no clear beginning or end, so that the cycle continues. You will see on your, on your screen two diagrams and these diagrams illustrate the difference between the two types of processes. A cyclic process is described in very much the same way as a linear process, except that it is not always clear where a cycle begins and where a cycle ends. If you look at the linear process, as the word linear tells you, it is in a line, one step after the other. First you have the input, then you have step A, followed by step B, followed by step C, and then followed by step D, and the output or the result. You can name these steps as A, B, C, D, or you can name them as step 1, step 2, step 3, step, step 4, whatever. But there is always some input and then you have uh, an output or a result at the end. In contrast, a cyclic process, you have a number of steps. And these steps keep going on and on and on and on. One merges into the other. One emerges from the other. And the cycle continues. Now, you will see a flow diagram which illustrates the carbon cycle. The diagram shows how carbon is found in the atmosphere, in animals, in plants and in the soil. Below the diagram, the flow diagram, is a list of sentences which describes the stages in a cycle. These sentences are not in an acceptable sequence. You use this flow diagram, you use it as a guide, and you match the sentences with the stages in the flow diagram to produce a text which is acceptable, which is in acceptable sequence. You look at the carbon cycle and you will notice that the process continues. There is, di there is carbon dioxide in the atmosphere which is a result of the burning of coal, wood, oil and then you have uh, green plants, plants which are eaten by animals and these plants, carbon di dioxide is to be found in the atmosphere because of the respiration of plants and in the same way you have the respiration of animals, the animals who eat the green plants and they respire uh, and their respiration it all goes into the atmosphere and then you've got plants and animals that are decayed by bacteria and fungi 
Some people say fungi, some say fungi, both are correct. So you have plants and vegetables that are decayed and they also give out carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Then you've got vol volcanoes. These volcanoes also give out carbon dioxide and you find that this circle continues and this diagram, the flow diagram, uh, which is in a cycle form, it doesn't look very cyclical, I know, but it is describing a cycle. You will find sentences based on the information that is given in the diagram. These sentences are not in the correct order. Look at them and see if you can put them in an acceptable sequence. Number one. Look at sentence number one. Sometimes when plants and animals die and decay, bacteria act upon the decayed body and liberate carbon dioxide as one of the products. Now, your knowledge of sequences can come into use over here. Similarly, plants respire at night and give out carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Sentence number three. But this never happens because when plants take in carbon dioxide during the daytime, animals give out carbon dioxide as a result of respiration. Carbon dioxide, sentence number four, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is used by plants for photosynthesis. Sentence five, sometimes coal, wood and oil are burnt. And this produces carbon dioxide gas, which goes to the atmosphere. Sentence number six. This is known as the carbon cycle in nature. Sentence number seven. So in this way, carbon dioxide is returned to the atmosphere. Number eight. Carbon dioxide is usually found in the atmosphere, while the compounds such as carbohydrates, Carbonates and bicarbonates are found in animals, in plants and in the soil. Therefore, number nine, sentence number nine, therefore there is always a continuous cycle in which carbon is being removed and replaced in some way or other. And the last sentence, number ten, if plants keep on removing carbon dioxide from the air, from the atmosphere, then very soon the atmosphere may be without any carbon dioxide. Now, look at these sentences again. Which one would be number one? The sentence marked number eight, carbon dioxide is usually found in the atmosphere. That is number one. Sentence number eight, the Roman number eight, should be number one. Sentence number four would be carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is used by plants for photosynthesis. That would be number two, right? Sentence number four would come second. And sentence number ten, if plants keep on removing carbon dioxide, that should be number three if you look at the screen again. Sentence number two, Roman two, similarly plants respire at night. That should be sentence number five to be followed by sentence number one, sometimes when plants and animals die. That is number six right? And that sentence should be followed by, therefore, there is always a continuous cycle, which is number nine. And the last sentence should be sentence number six, which is, this is known as the carbon cycle in nature.
Now, that was one sample for you. Let us look at another sample of how cyclic writing takes place. On your screen, you will see the life cycle of the malaria parasite. Look at it carefully. Look at the different stages. Number one, the mosquito injects saliva when it bites. Parasites enter the blood of man. That is followed by the next stage, which is parasites then enter the liver, the liver of the man who has been bitten by the mosquito. They change, that is the parasites change and they increase in number. That is stage two, which is followed by the third stage, which is parasites then enter the blood cells. This causes an attack of malaria. And this is followed by the fourth stage, where parasites change again. And a new form of parasites and new form of parasites enters mosquitoes. Number four can also from number four from the man the mosquito bites the man, sucks the blood from man, and the cycle goes on. The parasites pass from the stomach of the mosquito to the saliva and back again. So it is the circle has been completed. Now, I hope you looked at that diagram carefully and look at the text now. This is the text that is written that is based on that illustration, right? Now some of the sentence over here should not be there. That is, there are a few sentences that are irrelevant. This text is based on the flow diagram on the life cycle of the malaria parasite. There are some sentences in this text. Read it and see if you can spot a sentence or two that does not be belong in this passage, in this text. Just note, the, uh, the sentences are marked, they are numbered. Note mentally which sentences do not belong in that passage, which ones are irrelevant. Sentence number one, malaria is caused by tiny one-celled animal parasites called plasmodia that are injected into the blood of man by the female Anopheles mosquito. Number two, some diseases are transmitted by tiny water animals. Sentence number three, the Anopheles mosquito sucks blood from a person with malaria. Number four, once in the stomach of the mosquito, these parasites undergo some development and end up in the mosquito's salivary glands. And the fifth sentence, houseflies transmit microbes on their feet. Number six, if this mosquito now bites a healthy person, it introduces some parasites together with the saliva into the blood of the person. Sentence number seven, the malarial parasites then enter the person's liver in which they change and multiply. Sentence number eight, from there they pass into the blood cells where they cause the malaria attack. And sentence number nine, the last sentence, the spread of insect-borne diseases can be controlled. Now, out of those nine sentences, there were two sentences that were not related to the text or to the diagram. Which sentences were they? Go through it. One, two, the sentences are numbered for you. And I'm sure that makes it easy for you to spot them.
those are the sentences the irrelevant sentences are number 2 some diseases are transmitted by tiny water animals and sentence number 5 house flies transmit microbes on their feet these two sentences are not part of the life cycle of the malaria parasite therefore they do not form part of the text right now that was a a short practice session for you to realize that when you are writing a cyclic process you have to follow according to the illustration the diagram here is another practice session you have a diagram which shows you how water is treated and made clean for use write a description of this cycle right this is part of your homework you are going to follow the same pattern as you have seen and you will see in today's lesson write a description of this cycle quickly make a note of the cycle you can see it on your screen it is a cycle of how water is treated and made clean for use but you have to keep a few things in mind a few points in mind number 1 to explain the cycle consider the best point to enter it where will you enter it from where are you going to start number 2 you break down the cycle into stages consider the basis on which the stages might be defined use a thesis statement for the introductory paragraph number 3 use topic sentences for each paragraph within the text and number 4 give a title to your writing i have already uh, mentioned to you what the diagram is about if you look at that diagram i know it does it's not exactly cyclic but it is moving around in the form of a circle it talks about domestic waste water fr from the kitchen water from uh, washing water from the ba bath water from the wc the water closet then you've got other domestic uses how they are used water is used in the house because in our part of the world which is hot we do a lot of washing we do a lot of people wash their the floors then you've got water in the water pipes and all this water from the kitchen waste from the house waste it goes into the purification plant and in the purification plant they pump clean water and in the purification plant uh, in that plant some water is discharged into the sea or into the river whichever is nearer and then you've got uh, a lot of water which is collected from sewage tanks from sewage plants and some of it is sent to factories fertilizer factories and other factories where they are converted to fertilizers and how water from sewers and from domestic waste how it is clean and purified now you've seen the cycle and i have given you the hints write an essay one paragraph two paragraphs three paragraphs well it should be more than one paragraph write one of 3 uh, to 3 to 4 paragraphs and i hope you are now in a position not only to follow a text written with a cyclical structure but also to write a description of a cycle now we shall move on to the third type of linear description which is the cause effect relationship at the heart of all scientific disciplines 
is the attempt to analyze cause and effect. In our daily lives, we deal with causes and effects of things. What is the effect of something? What causes something? We look for causes of failure in our students. We try to discover the problems, the causes of children's erratic behavior. We look for political causes, or the political causes of the downfall of a certain government. We look for economic causes. We look for, uh, and all the time you will notice that political uh, statements, economic uh, specialists, economists, they are theorizing, they are giving theories about the cause or causes of the collapse of economic systems, political systems, unemployment, etc., etc. So you notice that cause and effect is something that which, with which we deal in our daily lives. Now remember, cause and effect is also a linear process. It's a, re a linear relationship, sorry, not process, a linear relationship. In real life, causes always precede effects, as you will notice from the following passage. Read this passage. It consists of six sentences. The sentences are marked for you. And you have to look for the causes and the effects. In the northern areas of Pakistan, the once magnificent forests are slowly being destroyed by the effects of air pollution. Pine trees dying from pollution lose their needles, allowing sunlight to reach the forest floor. During this process, grass thrives in the increased sunlight and drives out the plants native to the soil such as moss, which helps to hold rainwater. The soil thus loses its natural power to absorb water and in turn becomes hard, which causes rain and snow to slide over the ground instead of being slowly absorbed into it. This results in erosion of the soil. After a heavy downpour, the eroded land finally falls away in huge landslides, destroying villages and whatever else comes in its way, and later causes floods in the plains. Now, in that paragraph, you will notice the whole paragraph is about, it is showing the cause effect relationship. Look at the causes. The first cause mentioned is air pollution. And at the same time, the effect is also mentioned. The effect is that forests are being destroyed. The second cause is also given there. The second cause is that sunlight causes grass to grow. Right? And when grass grows, what happens? The native plants are driven out. Now, why does sunlight cause grass to grow? The sunlight causes grass to grow because pine trees are losing their needles. So you see, one thing is interlinked with the other. Then, because the native plants, like moss, which have the capacity to retain uh, rainwater, they are driven out, the soil loses its capacity to retain water. It becomes hard. And the result is, the effect is, that soil erosion takes place and landslides occur. 
and when landslides occur, you find that huge chunks of land break and they slide down the mountainside with the result that villages are destroyed and there is a lot of destruction. And later on, in the plains, flooding occurs. Now, in that passage, you noticed that it was not easy to determine the causes and the effects if one merges into the other. Now, it is not easy to determine causes with any degree of certainty. Why? For a number of reasons. Firstly, the existence of a clear time relation, a clear relationship, a clear time relationship between two events happening during the same period of time does not mean that one is the cause of the other. Just because two things took place at the same time doesn't mean that one is causing the other. That is why sometimes we have problems in locating cause and effect. Secondly, it is quite easy to confuse effect with cause and we often make assumptions. Sometimes two events are so closely related in time that we can show that relationship statistically. It could be that both events are effects of the same cause. Here we must be careful not to make assumptions. Determining cause and effect is not easy in writing. Let me repeat, determining cause and effect is not easy in writing because you have to provide evidence. Therefore, sweeping statements should be avoided in writing. In writing, you must always provide evidence. Do not make sweeping statements. In the English language, there are expressions which make it easy for writers to say things for which they may not have 100% evidence. There are plenty of expressions uh, which give a margin to the writer. You have expressions like maybe, suggest, probably, it is said that. In most likelihood, you have the word likelihood. These are expressions. Uh, another expression is there is evidence to suggest that. Now, these are not categorically, uh, categoric statements. If you say maybe, if you say probably, it is likely, you are not 100% sure and you can get away with it, right? So, these expressions show that the evidence is not 100% certain. Now, you can see this on a diagram, on a table. The table, it gives you some guidelines on the language available for writers to state their degree of certainty. When you are 100% sure, completely, right? The, the verb that you can use is, is, is not, if it is, it isn't. You are 100% sure. When you say, when you are again 100% sure, you can say will. This will happen. This must happen or this must not take place. These are expressions that show a complete degree of certainty. Even with adverbs, adverbs like certainly, definitely clearly, undoubtedly, actually. These are all adverbs and these are all adverbs that you can use with complete assurance, with complete certainty. These 
these words convey that feeling. And when you are partially certain, partially, you could be less strong, very strong, but partial. Even partiality has a scale. You can use expressions like can, cannot, can, could, should, may, might. Right? These are all verbs that show a certain degree of you are not certain. You can do it. Right? And then the adverbs probably, presumably, possibly, perhaps. The word perhaps is a good one. It shows that you are not sure. Perhaps he'll come, perhaps he might not. And where you want to show impersonal or no commitment, you ex use expressions like, it is said that, so and so reports that, or there is evidence to suggest that. Now these are certain grammatical terms, terms that you must keep in mind. Now, cause and effect are very closely related. There are several ways of expressing cause and effect, cause effect relationship in English. You may either place the cause or the effect first in the sentence and you will look at two sentences uh, that contain the same expression. Yet one focuses on cause while the other focuses on effect. Take the first sentence. Because of his depression, he remained quiet. Because of his depression, he remained quiet. The cause is depression. The effect is he remained quiet. Now, over here, the, the focus is cause. The second one is, he remained quiet because of his depression. And the focus is, in the second one, the focus is on effect. Now, when you write about cause and effect, you have to decide for yourself whether the cause or the effect is more important to you and what you will focus on. There are many ways of expressing causal relations in English. And the simplest, the simplest way of showing cause is by using the expression because, because plus the clause. For example, take the sentence, the war started because the extremists had the upper hand in the government. Now, in that sentence, the word because te tells you the cause. What is the cause? The cause is the extremists had the upper hand in the government. Let us have some more practice. Here is the passage, and you notice. There are three expressions used by the writer to show causality. That is, cause. Use C for cause and E for effect. The text is tuberculosis of the lungs. Pulmonary, pulmonary tuberculosis is caused by in by infection of the lungs with the tubercle bacillus. Pulmonary damage is, almost, is due almost entirely to the human form of the tubercle bacillus, as distinct from the type found in cattle, which is mainly responsible for glandular and bovine tuberculosis. The bacteria lodge in the lungs 
are set up a chronic inflammation of a specific type. They produce areas of infiltration which have a characteristic tubercle formation, hence the name for the organism. Right? This was a passage taken from a book called Study Writing. Right. Now, uh, if you look at that passage, it is a difficult passage. It talks about pulmonary tuberculosis, tuberculosis of the lungs. Now, you have to spot the places where which show cause. Look at the first sentence. Pulmonary tuberculosis is caused by infection. Very simple. It's the phrase is caused. Is caused by the infection of the lungs with the tubercle bacillus. Look at sentence number two. Pulmonary damage is due almost entirely to the human form. Over there, the effect is pulmonary damage. The cause is, is due almost entirely. That expression shows the cause. And the effect is pulmonary damage. And the phrase, the type found in cattle, that is a cause. And the next one is mainly responsible. That is the effect. Look at number three. There is no cause or effect mentioned. Sentence number four. They produce areas of Ill infiltration. That is cause. And at the end of the sentence, you have hence the name for the organism. That is the effect. Now, in this passage, if you look at it again, you will see there are clear expressions used by the writer to show causality, to show the cause. And effect, if you can spot the cause, you would have no problems in spotting the effect. Let's look at another text. And you notice which words in the text show cause and effect relationship. I'll read it out for you. When rain falls on mountains, it collects in depressions in the rocks. The extreme cold causes the ice to freeze and glaciers to form. The ice melts and freezes again due to changes in the temperature. Erosion of the rock of the mountain, of the mountain depression, occurs as a result of the continual melting and refreezing, and it and is worsened by the action of wind moving the water. Eventually, the water wears away the rock to form a small stream which carries deposits of soil and rock which cause further erosion, gradually enlarging the stream. Now this passage was from a geography textbook. Now notice there are words over here in this passage which show cause and effect relationship. In the first sentence, when rain falls on mountains, it collects in depressions in the rocks. Is there any expression 
Are there any words that show cause and effect? None at all. Look at the next sentence, number two. The extreme cold causes the ice to freeze and glaciers to form. Yes, very simple. You have the word cause and that itself tells you the cause. It's the extreme cold that causes the ice to freeze. Sentence number three. The ice melts and freezes again due to changes in temperature. Now, which expression is used over there? And it is the expression due to, which shows the effect. Er number four, erosion of the rock of the mountain depression occurs as a result of the continual melting and refreezing and is worsened by the action of wind moving the water. Now, over there, you have plenty of expressions. The first one is as a result, which is showing effect. And the next one is worsened by, that is also effect. And the third one is uh, worsened by or increased by the action of wind moving in the water. You have two effects over there. And in the last sentence, eventually the water wears away the rock to form a small stream. And true form is effect. That is the effect. The effect of the water wearing away the rock. And further down, it says it carries deposits of soil and rock which cause further erosion, gradually enlarging the stream. And you have the, the expression cause. Now, when you write, you have to be very careful and use words that show a cause-effect relationship. Now, read the following text. You have another piece of a passage, a text, and see if you can spot cause and effect words in this passage. Watching television, uh, watching Watching violence on television is beneficial and helps decrease violent behavior because viewers get rid of some of their own aggressive impulses through viewing and in this way reduce the chance that they will perform aggressive acts. I'm sure you've never heard such a view expressed before. But some people think that if you watch uh, violence on TV, it sort of prevents you from doing that yourself. Now, in that sentence, notice it is one single sentence. Can you spot the cause and effect words over there? Yes, the word because is there and I said because plus the whole clause and over there the word because tells you that this is the cause viewers get rid of some of their own aggressive impulses the cause is given you watching violence on TV is beneficial right why because viewers get rid of some of their own aggressive impulses. That is the cause plus the clause that goes with. Through viewing and in this way reduce the chance that they will perform aggressive acts. Now, 
in today's lesson, you became familiar with cause and effect structures in texts and you became familiar with the expressions of certainty and doubt. And before that, we looked at cyclic process and you learnt that when you write a cyclic description, you may begin anywhere in the process. Now, you should be able to identify and express cause and effect accurately and clearly using suitable expressions of certainty and you should be able to write cause and effect relationships in a clear manner. I'm sure you realize that writing cause and effect is not easy, but we had practice in today's lesson and you should be able to write cause and effect passages. Next time, we shall look at spatial relations, how in writing you write about places, their locations and we will look at another way of organizing text and that is classification. Again, these are ways that are used by people studying science, writing cyclic processes, writing processes that are linear, writing uh, definitions, writing classifications. So, in today's lesson, you became familiar with cause and effect structures in text, you became familiar with expressions of certainty and doubt, and you should be able to identify and express cause and effect accurately and clearly, and you should be able to use suitable expressions of certainty and of cause and effect. Allah Hafiz, see you next time. Khuda Hafiz.